remember why we did that. Because the dolphin is still there yeah. at SeaWorld. Yeah. And she grandmothers all the other dolphins. And as yeah, I said, she's enough. got warts, yeah, one of us doesn't. <laughs> she needs to hear about the warts. No one knew about the warts. Yeah. Yeah. But she's a gorgeous girl. Yeah, but she thinks you're a bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of us had more work. <laughs> Both balance balls on your nose. <laughs> so. well, as, as I said, as I said, I have been working for Channel Nine since I was thirteen. <laughs> it's it's a cool. great accessory, though, isn't it? What? A dolphin. <laughs> it's like, Handbag. I'm, I take a dolphin. You, know, just, you always make an entrance if you rock up on a dolphin. <laughs> exactly, or a zebra. I always wanted to ride on the stage in a, on a zebra. No. Like, you don't need to do anything after that. No. You arrived on a zebra. No. I, I think that's how Carrie Ann came to Earth. That's how I imagine. So I imagine you coming to Earth. You're like an episode. You're like Free Willy on acid. It's like I love what you do. God, you know, like, it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> Pinky, am I picking up that you might have a bit of a crush on uh, the grand lady of Australian television? Don't embarrass either of us. We talk about this <laughs> off air, but yeah. Yeah, you're a muso. <laughs> you don't work during the day, do you? What do you do? You watch TV and do you wear what? pants? <laughs> Oh, this day, I'm, I'm, I'm owning up now. <laughs> well, I can. I will, I will be way. your dolphin. <laughs> as long as you put your dorsal fin away. <laughs> I can't speak for my dorsal fin. <laughs> would, you like, would you like us to leave, Pinky? <laughs> Don't embarrass this. Someone is chucking a banana and stuff. Like, that's not cool. Like, who threw the banana at you? Do you remember that? See a banana. The, see the cooler. I hope it's a banana. I hope it's nothing else. <laughs> it's just somebody off out of the edge of the photo. <laughs> <laughs> it's Eddie Maguire. No. <laughs> standing there. Carrie Ann and Pinky! Pinky. The nominees for Outstanding Excellence in Entertainment are... The Big Brother Bogans, who gave Australian TV turkey slapping, and Family First, something else to whinge about. You guys are mean to me. <laughs> That's funny, though. You're yeah. mean. <laughs> Tom, Katie and, strangely, Harry Suri, who came out asking when the wedding was. <laughs> George Michael, who says smoking cannabis keeps him sane and happy. <laughs> like this. And Keith Richards, who says he's a changed man after his brush with death earlier this year. And there's something in Keith's words for all of us. I guess what I've learned from this is don't sit in trees anymore. <laughs> and the excellent winner is... Keith Richards. <laughs> Keith couldn't be here tonight, but to accept the award, his very, very, very good friend, Carrie Ann Kennelly. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. It, it is a very great honour to accept uh, this award for someone who couldn't be bothered turning up. <laughs> Uh, but we all know what a joy it is. We all, well, we all know what a joy it is. We to know what a joy it is. To be recognised for our work. But I do think we should spare a thought for those people who have never been honoured with an award like this or something even simpler like a gold logie. <laughs> Any logie. <laughs> People who just keep working at the cutting edge of Australian television without a trace of resentment. <laughs> that no one has ever had the common decency to just to toss them a strange looking medal on a bit of plank. Nothing! <laughs> but 
It's for those people, this award, for the hard-working, talented, well-loved. <laughs> really loved. So well-loved. <laughs> Baby, 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 I don't know what to say. Can you give her an award? For the well-loved, overlooked people, I accept this award. <laughs> The Prime Minister admits in 10 years he's yet to find the President's clitoris. It's um, uh, a difficult region. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Arch Barker and Fiona O'Rourke. Now, if you can't go to sleep without worrying that evil will corrupt your children, worry no more. Now they can wear the Armour of God pyjamas. <laughs> Armour of God PJs are a response to Satan's PJs, which have the special quick opening panels for access to the devil's playground. <laughs> Fiona, your kids scare the hell out of you. Do they go to church? Yeah, look, we do take them to... Look, this happened a couple of weeks ago. We got a new um, World Vision baby from Africa, because <laughs> the last what one shat us. <laughs> <laughs> You traded yours in. <laughs> how, did that, how, how did that phone call go? No, that's not true. The last one grew up, so we got a new one, right? right. So I put the picture of the new one on the fridge, so anyone who yeah. comes into the house will think I'm a saint. <laughs> and, and then it was a couple of days after that, we're all in the car and taking the kids to Matt. Yeah. Right? And my youngest is evil. Um, <laughs> no, she is, because she was born really pretty and we gave her anything it wanted and now yeah. it's nine and we have to keep it and we can't give it back. <laughs> anyway, so she's sitting in the back of the car, I kid you not, she goes like this, we're on our way to Mass and she just lost her mind and she goes, I wish I was from Africa! <laughs> and we turn around, yes. what? And she said, because then I wouldn't have to say thank you to God for anything because he wouldn't have given me anything <laughs> and I could sleep in on Sundays! <laughs> Does she go to Sunday school? No, just the... I don't know that we'll be letting her leave the house. <laughs> I, used to, I was religious as a child, yeah. yeah. I was, yeah. It's surprising, but I was. I used to pray. I used to pray. I really did. I'd how how old were you doing that? Up until probably 11 or 12. Yeah, I used right. to pray, pray that I would get famous and have a hot girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> what? Yeah! Right. It did work. I, um, I, was, I was a Sunday school teacher. My God! <laughs> wow! Why is everyone so shocked by that? It was in Africa, wasn't it? Yeah. That's why all those kids need sponsoring now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Arch? Well, I wasn't that religious growing up, but my, most of my experience with religion was through the holidays. Yeah. I just went along with it because you could get stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I never really understood it as a kid. Like Easter, it's like, all right, kids, today's the day our Lord, Savior, Jesus rose from the dead okay now go find the chocolate eggs that the big magic bunny hit <laughs> okay even as an adult i don't get all the holidays like I, I celebrate christmas but i'm still trying to like figure it out it's like i understand jesus was born on christmas that's right mm -hmm. yeah that is right so it's christmas is technically jesus's birthday yes yep. then i'm like so i gotta buy freaking everybody a present <laughs> Usually it's just the one guy. You know, I think there's been a very expensive misunderstanding. <laughs> if you want to get kids in interested in religion, you got to put it into terms that they understand. Right. I'm excited, and that's not that hard to do. But you got to, okay. like, you can, instead of like taking them to a Bible class, make like, you know, a religious cereal or something like, you know, like Jesus Crunch, you know, <laughs> toasted oat cereal with new fruity disciples, <laughs> mm, lemony Luke. Strawberry Peter. <laughs> oh, pruny Judas. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a bumper sticker the other day. It just said, I think it was in reference to the war. It said, who would Jesus bomb? <laughs> I was like, uh, Rome? <laughs> I remember about church though is when I was old enough to think like that is just sitting there just checking out all the chicks who you'd 
You want to church root. Chick. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what happens. That's what humans do. They. That's not look. what Jesus did. Oh, Jesus probably didn't he? Yeah. I'm I'm really sure? sure Jesus didn't go check out Mary Magdalene. She is hot, no, and I hear a whore. <laughs> I don't think Jesus did that. Uh, well, the Jesus I know did. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Fiona and I. The nominees for Outstanding Excellence in Religion are... The nun in Sicily who set fire to her priest lover's house after finding him in bed with a married woman. <laughs> Pope Benedict, who loved his neighbor by quoting a medieval emperor who said the Prophet Muhammad's teachings were evil and inhuman. The American Christian group who thinks hello is a satanic word and wants it replaced with heaven O. Oh. That's a good one. And the Buddhist monk in Cambodia who was defrocked for running through the streets naked after a night drinking rice wine laced with toads. <laughs> and the excellent winner is Art. Heaven O! <laughs> and to accept the award, Adam Spencer. Thank you so much. I'm very excited. I'm here tonight not just to accept this award on behalf of the American Christian group, but also on behalf of God himself. <laughs> uh, God, God couldn't be here tonight. Uh, he rang me yesterday, said he couldn't make it, asked could he send his son Jesus. <laughs> I said, but surely God, that would mean you'd be there, because you are Jesus and he is you and the Holy Spirit, three and one, one in three, the Trinity. <laughs> and God said, look, I'll be honest with you, mate, I've never really understood that. <laughs> I think St. Peter was on some pretty weird shit at that time. <laughs> God can't be here, Jesus can't be here, there's a few gods who can't be here. Uh, Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, can't be here. Very busy around the world at the moment, Shiva. Um, ironically, mainly busy in countries where no one believes in Shiva, <laughs> but they believe that their god is the god of compassion and infinite love so much that if you believe your god is the god of infinite compassion, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> Thankfully tonight we do have some gods here. Muhammad is here. It's great to have him here. Of course, we can't show you his face on television. It turns out all this time he's been a dentist. Very weird. Uh, I'm also accepting this on behalf of the American Christian Association and, and the dictionary in question who've agreed to change hello to heaven-o. They've also agreed to remove the word sin from singing. Singing will now be living a full and fruitful life through our Lord Jesus Christ, ging. <laughs> and after continued lobbying from all of the Australian media, including everyone who's ever worked with the guy, the phrase country music will now be known as Kyle Sandilands re music. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Stuff you won't see in the glass house. Kim Beasley justifies his passion for photocopying his ass. In many ways, my most important blueprint. <laughs> it's time to present the most coveted award of the night, which this week is called... The nominees for the 2006 Golden Cretan are Mel Gibson for filling his bloodstream with tequila and the world with Christian love. <laughs> Harpy in Greek legend, a rapacious and filthy monster having a woman's head and a bird's body. In England, Jermaine Greer. <laughs> North Korean leader Kim Jong Il in a year when the true nutbag leaders of the world were relatively quiet. Jongy really stepped up by exploding a bomb that may or may not have been nuclear, may or may not have worked properly, and may or may not have been one of Saddam's WMDs. <laughs> <laughs> and today, tonight's Naomi Robson for a khaki frock, a lizard on her shoulder, and a tribe of non-existent cannibals. <laughs> have you rescued Wawa yet, Nay Nay? I'm guessing the answer to that is no. <laughs> The 
the 2006 Glasshouse Golden Cretton is... Mr. Mel Gibson! And um, we're humbled to actually have him here with us tonight. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mel Gibson! <laughs> Oh, uh, I gotta stop drinking. <laughs> I look shit out. <laughs> and I need to wee. <laughs> Ooh. Now, is this a, an honour for you to win this award? It is an honour, yeah. I hope to win it again next year, yeah. <laughs> really? Well, we're, yeah. Not, we're not on air next year. We're not on air? No. Oh, uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Surely if I can make a comeback, you can too. <laughs> Have you got any words of advice for Michael Richards, Kramer? Yeah, thanks for speaking. <laughs> well, it took the heat off me, didn't it? Now, we know that you're, um, you know, you've made The Passion of the Christ. What, what movies are you thinking about making next? Um, I'm thinking about making... Uh, <laughs> Mad... Mal... Mad Mal. <laughs> it's gonna be a reality show. <laughs> You reckon you're wacky, Borat? What do I get going? <laughs> Look, now, aren't the Jews really responsible for all the wars in the world, Mel? Oh, no, but they did come up with the idea of cutting off me foreskin and... Uh... <laughs> hey, oh, that's not pretty downstairs, I can tell you. <laughs> that's no longer a lethal weapon. <laughs> Is, is there any way you think you could make amends for what you did to the Jewish people? Yeah, of course there is. I could, uh, what could I do? I oh, know! 